how do we feed a growing population? Approaching 10 billion people, a healthy diet that also minimizes environmental harm. The trouble is that we're, we're moving in the wrong direction. Business as usual will end up with us disrupting what's called planetary boundaries, which offer us safe operating space for human activity. Food systems account for approximately 30% of greenhouse gas emissions driving climate change. If we exceed the planetary boundaries, that also impacts on our ability to grow food that is nutritious, that is healthy. So it's pretty crucial we do something about it. Food is medicine. The health of people and the health of the planet are very linked. The evidence base makes it clear that change is possible and there are options and alternatives that are healthier for the planet, for people and also for a just society. It's really exciting actually that there is a guide such as the Planetary Health Diet that could be used as a framework to help that transformation. This Planetary Health Diet is very much uh, a food is medicine initiative because it's getting at going to the core of what is making us sick. It's the food we eat and we have to do better. The planetary health diet isn't a restrictive or prescriptive diet. Understanding it as a flexitarian diet is probably the best label. It is based on less meat and dairy intake but it also promotes more plant-based variety and, and a more diverse diet, being culturally adaptable to different countries and different vegetables and plants and different tastes and different ways of eating. What's happened since the 2019 report is that all sorts of researchers across the world published scientific papers showing higher adherence to this diet, lower risk of disease. I used to eat dairy every day and since adopting the planetary health diet six, seven years ago through working on eat, I occasionally have cheese as a treat, but I've, I've really reduced dairy products and the data and the science is, was enough to make me want to do it. So if we come round to dinner of yours, we'll get, we'll get planetary <laughs> health diet? You would, you would, yes. The catchphrase of the planetary health diet had a very successful impact to the point that I find sometimes I'll, I'll meet somebody who will tell me casually that they eat the planetary health diet. And the way it's been adopted took me by surprise. If you know about the damage that's being done by a particular type of food on your plate three times a day, then you maybe start to think a bit differently about it. I came to food through the lens of fisheries and marine systems. Fish are a really rich source of micronutrients and it's in West Africa, it's particularly small pelagic fish, so things like sardines, called yaboi, and it's a really important source of nutrition and it's affordable and it's delicious. <laughs> and there's a little saying about the yaboi that uh, it's lucky that the fish are so fiddly because it stops the rich people bothering with them. But now the fish meal and fish oil industry um, is growing in West Africa, those same small fiddly fish can just be ground up and processed into fish meal and fish oil and suddenly they're easily accessible to higher income markets. It feeds the global pet, livestock and aquaculture industries, which means there's less fish available for the women to process and distribute inland. There's less fish available on the market for the local consumers. It's a source of nutrition that was taking care of local nutritional needs and fish consumption in Senegal has halved in the past 10 years and that's directly correlated with a rapid increase in the number of factories along that coastline. There are other things happening. The price of fish has gone up and the pressure on the fish stocks as well has really, really increased. As we try and address problems within our food system, we really have to look at the interconnected nature of it. And I think justice provides this glue because it enables you to think, okay, if we're tackling a problem, what will it do to the environment? What will it do to people's livelihoods? What will it do to people's diets? My concern, and there are many of these traditional diets around the world um, that are highly nutritious, that are in line with a planetary health diet, but 
Once those diets are lost, or those habits are lost, it's really hard to get them back. Our food system, it is widely now recognised, is failing us. I, I find it really disturbing that the messaging and predominant way of eating is processed food, which is really so unnecessary and difficult to escape. There's a disconnect between some of the big manufacturers and dominant voices in, in the food industry that's presenting this as being the normal, healthy way to live. Where the foods then become unhealthy is when they're highly or extra or so-called ultra-processed. There are several ingredients which are additives, things like emulsifiers, stabilizers and artificial colors, artificial sweeteners. They have a lot of calories, but they're nutrient poor. You'll find very little fiber in ultra-processed foods and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. Producing all these ultra-processed foods absolutely can affect the flow of nutrients because entire regions in some countries, the traditional farming is replaced by producing these ingredients, such as palm oil, for example, and high amounts of sugar. So it does affect global nutrient flow and global nutrient content. The work of this Eat Lancet Commission really resonated with what I was finding in fisheries as well. And the problem, I guess, that's causing the rerouting of fish all around the world, away from where it's needed, is this disconnect between how much we need to be eating, particularly of these animal source foods, and how much we are eating. As part of this transformation, some sectors would need to contract, and others would need to expand. There's a real sort of justice element in terms of how diets are being pushed into a less and less healthy and a less and less sustainable way. Demands on people's time have increased so much and our food environments are conditioned in such a way that the most convenient foods tend to be the most highly processed foods which tend to have both higher environmental pressures but also worse human health outcomes. Convenient could be really healthy, you know, if the food environment was conditioned in a way that convenience foods were nourishing and healthy foods, but, but it's not. We all know uh, that many of the highly processed or ultra processed foods, junk foods, have billions spent on them in terms of the advertising. And the slogans that uh, are used, they stick with you. They help you to make impulsive, more emotion-driven choices. And we're all humans, so we all fall for it. No matter how much your knowledge level, I fall for it myself. You may not have gone into the supermarket wanting to buy that, but you jolly well come out with it. So I feel quite uncomfortable about that. The challenge is for us to make the healthy choice the easy choice. We need our high streets to look different. We need to redress that balance. One should not have every single time you buy an item of food, have to use willpower. Our food system really needs to make the job easier for us. I uh, describe this as low agency or high agency decisions. So low agency would be, you could with closed eyes just pick up the products, you know they're good for you, they're good for the planet. High agency is when you have to think every day, right, um, is this good, is this not good, is it good for the planet, is it good for health? The diets of the richest 30% of the global population contribute to more than 70% of the environmental pressures from food systems. Food sharing culture is a critical element in this change. I grew up in Ethiopia where you eat off one plate. You, know, you couldn't not share. Mexico and Kenya both have dietary guidelines, the recommendations to eat together and the importance of sitting down and eating and sharing. It's about bringing people together. It's about nourishing both your body, but also your kind of soul. And part of why we're transgressing the planetary boundaries in such crucial ways is because we've lost that. A just food system is one where everyone shares in the responsibility to making sure that they're habits and practices, they are within planetary boundaries. And in slowing down and eating together and appreciating the food a little bit more, there's also the possibility to connect back to 
the workers, producers, the environments, the ecology that it all comes from and just reignite an appreciation for the value of food to people and nature. We have a big task ahead of us, you know. Um, our food system will be fundamentally different in 25 years to what it is today. It is a fundamental change that either will be imposed upon us or that we need to bring about. Justice is critical to this transformation and the only way that we can bring about such a large-scale transformation is if we have everyone on board. When we are in a crisis, we have to take action on the best available evidence. This report has the state-of-the-art best available evidence. And is it possible? Yes. It just needs uh, a report to become a movement.